from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead, and today I'm joined by Jared Davis, our biologist for fur bearers in Oklahoma, and really, what does a fur bear biologist do? Uh, well, Todd, what my main goal is uh, I oversee the hunting and trapping opportunities um, that we that we establish for the 14 fur bear species in Oklahoma. So, as as a broad overview, that's that's pretty much what I do. That's great, and there's there's a lot of opportunities in Oklahoma for sportsmen. There are, there are. Um, you know, with the with the 14 species, there are four of those species that are open year round for hunting, and um, and then we have the trapping season, which which opens up those 10 other species. Uh, the trapping season is from December 1st to the end of February. So there are a lot of, of opportunities uh, for trappers to partake in, in this sport in Oklahoma. That's great. Well, today we're going to be talking about trapping. Uh, even a little bit later, we'll actually go out and run a trap line with a gentleman. But let's talk about some of these traps because I've, I've done a lot of predator hunting, but I haven't ever really trapped. And so this is all new to me. Okay. Well, there's two basic uh, categories for traps. Um, you've got your box traps mm -hmm. and then your leg hold traps. And within the leg hold traps you've got your single springs, double springs, and uh, a new a new type of trap that's been offered to uh, the trappers in the past couple years, the enclosed trigger trap. Okay. So uh, what we have here, this is uh, just your your basic um, box trap. It can be larger, smaller, depending upon you know what kind of species that you're gonna that you're gonna target. Mm -hmm. So this is just your basic basic box trap um, you know it, it, it catches them live and unharmed so I mean okay. that's just your basic uh, basic box trap and then um, here we have uh, this is a double spring foothold trap yeah um, with the footholds it has to have an offset so that's one of the regulations it has to be an what eighth is inch. the offset an offset meaning that uh, the jaws don't come together. Oh, okay. Uh, completely. So, okay. Um, this is a double spring uh, offset foothold trap. Um, it's very common. It's used used a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said earlier, the enclosed trigger trap, which has just been offered uh, as a legal means of trapping uh, in the last couple of years. And this is a, uh, a very popular trap. Uh, it mainly targets uh, raccoons, mm -hmm. but you can, can catch uh, skunks and possums in there as well. That's great. Well, you know, I mentioned uh, that we're going to be going out with a gentleman, Reginald Murray. I think you know Reginald. I do know Reginald. And, you know, there's, uh, there's a, a few lucky folks in this world that have, have figured out what they love to do and then made a career out of it. And that certainly applies to Reginald. He is a nuisance wildlife control operator uh, and he traps for a living. And I had the privilege of hanging out with him one day as he ran one of his trap lines. And he used a lot of those, um, that last type of trap. You, the, you enclosed, the enclosed yeah. trigger trap. Yeah. He used a lot of those, so those must really work well. They do, <laughs> they do. Why don't we join Reginald Murray now out running a trap line. I've been trapping in excess of 25 years. I started when I was nine years old, introduced to it by my granddad in Southeast Texas. He was a real old school trapper that was uh, never shared secrets, so to speak. He was a don't talk, don't get in the way, shut up, listen and observe. And if you can't do that, go sit in the truck. But I remember uh, through his instruction of keeping my mouth shut and, and uh, watching a few times and sitting in the truck many times, because I would always open my mouth and ask a question. Uh, the very first thing I caught was a buck mink uh, in a creek bottom with a number one Victor single long spring trap. He cleared the snow so as it melts, it doesn't refreeze the trap to the ground. And it gives the appearance that something came along and worked the hole and dug it all out, which causes a visual attraction. So it entices them more. That's a dirt hole set. And this is bobcat urine. The lure's in the dirt hole. 
Maybe we'll get a bobcat or a coyote in that one. This was just a walkthrough set. There was a trail that came right through here next to this tree and that tree. I set two traps, one over there and one here. And I do that in case of coyotes. They generally hunt in pairs or a single. So a lot of times if they're hunting in pairs and you catch one, you'll wind up catching the other. Uh, but now that I've brushed it back to try to clear the ice so it doesn't freeze up, and there was no lure at all on these. I'll go ahead and do what they call a urine post out of this tree. And just spray some bobcat urine on it. And the same with that other one. When I was young, we had a, in my hometown, we had a, a restaurant called Ames Fried Chicken. And uh, we passed through a field to get to it from the house. And we used to go in there and they had dinner rolls for a nickel a piece. And I used to go in and, and get a kid's soda pop and uh, four dinner rolls for a quarter. talking to the manager or something one day because he was complaining about rats and I told him that I could trap the rats. He said that if I was willing to do that, then uh, he'd give me a dinner roll and a, for every rat I caught and for every six he'd give a soda pop also. So I started, I started trapping field rats for the restaurant, keep them out of the dumpster and out of the back of the restaurant. And before long, uh, I think in about two or three months, he was having to cook four or five extra pans of dinner rolls for me and I was taking them home in a trash bag and he said that you know, we, we had to renegotiate. Uh, I didn't realize at the time that he was losing money by having to cook all those extra rolls for me. So he, he renegotiated in a, in a manner that made me think I was getting the better end of the deal. <laughs> As I look back on it, that, that was not the case, but he, uh, he said for every 12 rats, he'd give me a two-piece dinner with an extra dinner roll and, uh, and a soda pop. So I started a transition and catch up, put in more traps and catch 12 rats. And then I'd go in, instead of going in every day to get my dinner rolls and soda, I was going in once a week and then once every two weeks and once every three weeks getting my two-piece dinner. Uh, so that was the first compensated job I had, but I didn't look at it as compensation. One of the things that I do also, as ice melts, a lot of times you can't find dry dirt or siftable dirt. So gophers have an uncanny ability of building mounds even through frozen ground. And the gopher mound is a prime place to find good dry dirt. So I keep a bucket of gopher dirt in the back of the truck with a lid on it to keep it from freezing or getting wet. So if I need extra dirt, and I do it from the area that I'm trapping so that it smells the same. Because say the, the animals, you know, they're anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times more sensitive in smell than humans are. And if you use dirt from 20 miles up the road, they can smell the difference and they'll dig the trap out instead of walking through it. A little bobcat urine on that. I'm going to the next set. I tell everyone you put yourself in the animal's perspective. Uh, animals are not inherently suicidal. They're not gonna wanna go where you're wanting them to go. But they are, in a lot of ways, like humans. They want the absolute most in return for the least amount of effort. So where you put a place or are going to set a trap for a coyote, you have to look at the environment and the situation that you have around yourself. So if you have obstructions, 
for instance, is it going to be easier to go under the obstruction or over the obstruction, around the obstruction, or is the lure and draw not enough to make them want to go where you want them to go? Okay. Well, I'm now back with Jared. And Jared, there's a lot of different regulations uh, revolving around trapping. So help me kind of understand some of these. Okay, well, first off, let's, let's go back to the season dates. Yeah. December 1st through February, or the end of February, February 28th. Uh -huh. um, I mean, those are the dates that it's legal to trap in Oklahoma. Um, to trap legally in Oklahoma, you have to have a hunting license, a trapping license, and a fur license. Okay. So you need to have all three of those to trap. Now, what Oklahoma. if I have a uh, lifetime license? If you have a lifetime, that covers that covers everything. So if you okay. have a, if you're a lifetime license holder here in Oklahoma, you don't have to purchase any of the of the extra licensing. Good to know. Um, the number of traps. If you're just you know an average average everyday guy that wants to go out and trap uh, with that hunting and trapping license, uh, you can have 20 traps. Uh, if you're a lifetime license holder, um, you know there's there's no limit on the amount of traps that you can set. Okay. Uh, if you're trapping on your own property, um, there aren't any types of signage that you need to, to let people know that there's traps on the property. But if, you're, if, you're, if you were trapping on my property mm -hmm. and I knew that you were out there, um, you'd have to have a sign out there that, that said traps I mean, to let other people know and to let you know, everybody know that there are traps on that property. Okay. Um, this has to be used on, on private property as well as public property. Okay. Um, so you know, it has to have the word traps on it and you know, be, be legible. And uh -huh. this has to be po posted at every uh, of the all the entrances onto that property. Okay, so like on a fence. On or a fence, like right next to the gate, just so people know that hey, there's traps out there. Okay. Um, all as, right. As far as the traps themselves, each trap has to have a a tag on it with the trapper's name and okay. address. Uh, that's just you know to verify you know these are your traps. That way, uh -huh. somebody. <laughs> pulls one of your traps you, they know they know who to give it back to sure. so I mean that's that's something that's that's got to be on there um, it's a it's a regulation in in Oklahoma you got to have your tags or okay. tags on your traps uh, the North American Bobcat and the North American River Otter are both listed on the uh, Convention on International Trade and in, of Endangered Species CITES or CITES um, and they're listed as an appendix to species um, they have to be tagged and monitored not mm -hmm. because they themselves are endangered, but because a close relative, the Mexican bobcat and the European river otter, are endangered. So oh. we have to tag those and identify them as a non-endangered species so to where they go on the, uh, the international trade market. That way they know that they were okay. legally harvested in a legal area. We'll be back with Jared and with Reginald right after this week's Outdoor News Report. You know, another interesting aspect of, of fur bearing and trapping is that you can actually sell the, the fur in Oklahoma. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good fringe benefit, uh, you know, being able to, <laughs> that's the only, the only season or the only animals in Oklahoma that you can do that with. There's usually two opportunities um, at the end of the fur bear season to, to attend fur auctions in Oklahoma. Um, and at that point in time, you can, you can sell your furs. If you you know, don't want to sell your furs and maybe sell them at a later date, uh, within 10 days after the close of season, uh, you've got to have what's an intent to hold uh, form filled out and sent back in. And that'll just give us an idea of, of what everybody's keeping over to sell for the next year okay. and make it legal for them to sell it later on. So. And it's an actual auction, isn't yeah. it? Oh yeah, it's, I mean, they've got auctioneers and everything. It's an experience, that's for sure, so. Now I'm guessing though that it's, it fluctuates the price that you would get fluctuates just like any other open market type thing like oil or gold or whatever. That's exactly right. And you know, it it changes from year to year and you can kind of you can kind of tell the the seasons that it's up because everybody's trapping. So, <laughs> it's it's a great way to, you know, go out and enjoy the outdoors and and maybe make a little money on the side too. You need me to grab anything? Alrighty.
right now finding a good anchor point for that spike on the bottom of that dog proof trap to go into without driving it with a root or driving it into it. I don't want to nail it. You can nail that into a root in a heartbeat. There's a lot of tracks work in this area coming through the sand. A raccoon's using that's an old collapsed beaver den. If a raccoon's using it for a den now, or just investigating, they can't seem to pass up a hole without going into it. Regardless of how many times they've been by it. Here I am setting my buddy BJ's dog proof in here. And, Cause I said it, I'll get a pack rat. He said he'd probably have the biggest coon in the state. You ever lost track of how many you've set and forget them or forget where they are? I, I never have. Never have. I can walk you to every set I've ever made. Since I started anchoring different, I haven't lost a trap to an animal. The only time I lose a trap now is if somebody happens to wander through the woods or hunting looking for game or whatever or kids they'll see you know the truck and they'll see it every day every day every day that builds curiosity so kids will get in there and then they'll they'll find it and uh, oh what's that especially with a quick link on it if they walk across it with a quick link then then it, it, unless they're just really really honest kids there it's gone the Fur Takers of Oklahoma, it's an incorporated nonprofit uh, trapping and predator calling association. Uh, I'm the current presiding president. We have uh, several goals and can be found on the website at oklahomatrapper.com. Uh, a few of those goals are to educate the public properly, break the misconception about what trapping is, and then provide, you know, the biggest thing is to provide a, a fun family atmosphere for all of the members and all of the guests, it's open to the public. We have a we have a members meeting. That's it's usually pretty informal. Uh, we provide a right now a fur auction one time a year for our members uh, or anybody that traps or hunts and wants to sell their fur. They just have to be a member to sell. Oklahoma is known for its bobcats among trappers. We have a lot of them. We had two that came across the table last year. Uh, they were Western cats, west of 35. They got $285 each. Uh, my bobcats last year, you're entitled 20 a year per licensee. They have to be sites tagged. Uh, I caught 18. I averaged on my bobcat sales $125 a piece. So, do you do that with raccoons? No, you won't do that with five to ten dollar raccoons. You won't do that with five to ten dollar beaver. You won't do it with 25 cent possums, 50 cent skunks. But if you catch it, and there's no limit on how many striped skunks you can catch, how many beaver you catch, how many coyote you catch, how many possums you catch, there's no limit on them. Quarters add up. And you're carrying on a heritage and a tradition. And if my personal opinion is if my kids are in the woods running their trap lines, I don't have to go hunt for them on the street. Well, Jared, you know, there are just a lot of opportunities to get involved in, in fur bearing, whether that's through predator hunting, uh, or with, with trapping, and, and I for one have learned a lot today. Well, that's good, I'm, I'm glad, and I hope, I hope everybody else has too. You know, trapping is a very time-consuming hobby. I mean, you've got to check those <laughs> trap lines every 24 hours, so I mean, it, it is time-consuming, but it's also really rewarding. If it's something that people are interested in, they just need to go out and try it and give it a shot, and if they know somebody that's, that's a veteran trapper, I guarantee you they're gonna be more than happy to, to pass on that trade. Hey, thanks for joining us today. If you'd like to connect with us more about trapping and other types of outdoor opportunities in Oklahoma, we'd encourage you to get involved with us on social media. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead. We'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.